Oh, Thank you all for coming out to uh, Gabe's speech. I know he's loving having all of you guys here. Gabe's an awesome person. His speech uh, is called Plane to Change Lives. Let's give him a round of applause. Yeah, I was clapping myself. When I was thinking of what to do for Capstone this year, I realized that I had way too many interests. After thinking about just like, in the form, Mr. Spector came and asked us, what do you want? And after hearing what the seniors talked about last year, about what do they want, I referred and I realized that what do you want has to go wrong, go along with what do you love. So after a lot of thinking about Capstone, I realized, and I put a definition for Capstone for myself. So Capstone is about, it's not about pursuing a future or picking a career, but it's about trying to do something that you might love in the future. And even if you realize something you don't like, that's okay, because that's a step to figuring what you love. So after a lot of thinking and praying about what I should do in the future, I decided to go and see what it'd be like to live a professional athlete's life. So uh, I think after doing research, I realized that professional athletes are looked up to as heroes. And after, uh, in, when Hurricane Harvey hit uh, Houston, a J.J. Watt, uh, a Texan, but a uh, guy who plays for the Houston Texans, um, he raised funds for uh, Houston. So his goal was the $200,000 for relief efforts, but after he spread it on social media and through interviews, it became a $37 million process. And like, that just shows like, the power that professional athletes can have, especially through social media. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24 to 27, it says, Do you not know that in a race, all runners run, but only one gets the prize? Run in such a way as to get the prize. Everyone who competes in the games goes into strict training. They do it to get a crown that will not last, but we do it to get a crown that will last forever. Therefore, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. I do not fight like a boxer beating the air. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave, so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified from the prize. After hearing just what Paul was saying, like he wants us to like share God's love with others, and especially the ones who do not know him. He wants to do it with purpose and not intention and and do it intentionally. Um, uh, I kind of came up with a mission statement for myself. I said that I want to use athletics and my love for basketball as a platform to tell other people about God. I want to be able to share that hope and that love I have to underprivileged kids. And I believe God will use that to expand his kingdom. So throughout my senior year, I've been thinking about my future a lot. And it's not been good. Uh, <laughs> I've really felt a calling to make a big difference. Uh, Jeremy Lin, who's an NBA player who plays for the Brooklyn Nets, uh, after high school, he had no athletic scholarships out of high school. He said he even had a hard time getting Division three schools to look at him. So even though he was a Northern California Player of the Year, um, this just shows that if you dream big and you can achieve your goals, you can achieve your dreams. Uh, it says, um, God's ways are higher than my ways. And that's just how the journey steps for him where it didn't look like he was going to be able to achieve that goal. And through all these like, mistakes and failures, he was able to achieve his goal, which now he's the first Asian American to play in the NBA. So in the, for Capstone this year, I plan to pursue three virtues. It was courage, confidence, and patience. Just through this experience, I really saw that I did develop them. Courage and confidence can be just kind of put together in a few short words. Hard work and dedication. I interviewed a guy called Garth Jacks, who was an ex-professional NFL player. Uh, he was born in Texas and he went to Florida State University on a full ride scholarship. He was drafted in the 11th round to the Dallas Cowboys. Uh, what I asked him was like, what does it take to be a professional athlete? He said it was the willingness to work harder than anybody else. He said he was good, but he wasn't great. Uh, he said it took a little bit of luck. It wasn't just part the sea and usher you into the promised land without any hard work. But he said some guy got injured and he was able to step in and that it took a little bit of luck that was able to get him to that position. He said hard work and dedication and a faithful relationship with the Lord and a bit of ladies luck kept him ahead of the curve. He said also in the environment there are two types of athletes. Some are born as just physical specimens and no matter what they do, they are better than most. The other, which was him, he had to work harder than everybody else. He had to dedicate himself to it and that was his whole process, and he said he needed it, he wanted it more than the first round picks. So to achieve your dreams, you have to disregard what other people think and push through obstacles. Steve Jobs says, 
The ones who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. God told me a lot about pressure and failure and how to handle it. He said, realizing that we're human and we make mistakes. The second is that we both and we all live in a broken world. Um, and the third is that God has forgiven us. That uh, if he can forgive me, why can't I forgive myself and the others I've offended? Uh, three steps. Uh, he said there's three steps to achieving your goals. If you're male, female, high school, collegiate, Christian, non-Christian, it doesn't matter. He said there's three steps. He said first is to dream a dream. If you have no purpose in life and you do not have a dream, that's kind of in vain. You have to start with the dream. The second is to establish goals, to keep yourself accountable, to know the next steps you have to take to pursue your dream. And the last one is to overcome obstacles, which he said was the hardest step. He said that's just going through the hardships of life, going through failure and pain. He said he was cut to second string. Uh, his wife had, was sick and he, he had to send her to a treatment center while he had to focus on taking care of his children, while trying to stay focused on his job. I always like, feel bad when I hear people say they want to give up on their dreams because they believe it's too big or believe they just can't do it. Uh, like Nothing is given, and that's what God taught me, that nothing is given and tomorrow is not given either. Nobody is guaranteed anything in life. Uh, they said, according to what he said, he said, nobody can measure heart. This is the most important piece. The heart and mind is even greater than height and size. Um, throughout this whole spring component, we also had to do a service component. I talked to Mr. Spector about what to do for a service component. So after a lot of thinking and joking around, I decided that I wanted to do a shoe drive. And I partnered with a shoe company uh, called Souls and Souls. And they donate shoes to third world countries. Uh, the mission statement for them is, it is, not for, uh, it is a nonprofit social enterprise committed to fighting poverty through the collection and distribution of clothing. Um, at this time, it was the spring sports season. So I went to Front Range's baseball team, girls soccer team, junior high girls soccer team. And I even went to Denver Christian's track team. Uh, for people who don't know this, Denver Christian and Front Range are rivals. And what I told them was a statement that I was pretty happy with, actually. Uh, <laughs> it was, uh, I believe there is something good about <laughs> athletics that unify us. Even though we are competitors on the field or the court, we can come together and do something that we both believe is true. And we can share that excitement and joy that we have from kicking a soccer ball around or shooting hoops to those who are unprivileged and don't get that opportunity. And, and it, the hardest part of this whole process was just reminding people. Like, I realized that from a two-week process of what I was supposed to do really became a six-week process. And I learned the virtue of patience because it was tedious. And I had to wait for people to donate shoes to me. Uh, and I also realized that I learned about myself that making a difference through small things is something I'm passionate about. Even though it was a shoe, I felt like every time I gave a shoe or I donated a shoe, like it changed somebody's lives and it helped somebody. Uh, I also realized that I'm impatient. I realized that I don't like checking up on people. Uh, I just want things to get done right away so I can move on to the next step, so I can like, just keep on going. And overall, even though I didn't enjoy the capstone to be, uh, oh, not the capstone. I didn't enjoy the shoe drive, to be honest. I was glad I did it. Uh, I believe it was received well. And I think every shoe just changed lives, and that was good for me. I learned the virtue of patience through it. Uh, in the winter component, I also read a book called Shaken by Tim Tebow. He talks about fighting the identity, fighting your identity in the midst of the storms of life. He's saying that it says that your circumstances that you're in right now do not define you. Um, I believe this encapsulates my athletics really well, and he encapsulates it by using sports as a platform to tell other people about God. Um, failure for good. So he used what he believes is failure, as the world might deem as success was to be a professional NFL quarterback, and he failed that uh, to be a long run one. Uh, but he actually changed that for good. He said, I, re I, relieve, I've, I received my, uh, I believe that my number one goal in life is to show Jesus through the way I love. Um, this is ultimately what I learned about athletics, that it's not about trying to follow what the world deems as success, but following what you love. And that might be sharing Jesus' love. And, that gives you a platform to do that. Uh, I, what I ultimately learned about athletics also is that your identity is found that you're a child of God. And from there, you're able to encourage others and impact others. And you have to step out of your comfort zone to do that. 
uh, disabilities. Uh, Tim Tebow said that he, and admits that he's dyslexic. I'm also dyslexic. But that also, that disability does not make you dumb. Albert Einstein, who was the father of the nuclear age, and Thomas Edison, who was the greatest inventor in history, were also dyslexic. And these are just examples of what's possible when you understand and utilize the way you were created to process things. Instead of conforming to what everyone else's learning style is, I'm not comparing myself to these brilliant people, but I believe there's something really unique that you can learn when you're, when, instead of conforming to what other people believe is true. If you hate your disability and you try to hide it, I believe you're just like, missing an opportunity to be able to share the gospel and share the love for someone who's going through a similar journey. Uh, God says he made you perfect and you are no accident. He can use what we believe and deem as weakness to change the lives of others. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians 12.9 In the spring, I interviewed a guy called Bob Krulich, who was also, <laughs> he was also an NBA, uh, he was also a player who played in Italy. Uh, he, uh, what the statement I really learned was, how do you spread the gospel through athletics? Uh, after high school, he was drafted to UC, uh, he had offers to go to UCLA to play under John Wooden or to go to Stanford, but instead he chose to go to Orient Pacific University. He said he never prayed for a win, but what he prayed was that he would honor God with the gifts that he was given. He said he was also genuine, and that was the key to how he was able to spread the gospel to others. He didn't preach or condemn people by saying what you were doing was wrong, but he said he just said he loved people, and he said he loved Jesus. He was honest, and he just didn't bring up the name of Jesus just for doing it for that purpose. Uh, he said he also affirmed people. When people say they love something or they, they love helping people, he said, hey, I see that in you, and I see that virtue. And that was the way he was able to encourage other people. He was real with his faith and himself. Do you really love Christ, or are you just putting on a show? His example was his wife. He said every time he spends time with his wife, uh, somebody can recognize that he really loves his wife, and they would leave being like, hey, this guy really loves his wife. Um, this is actually the same way with Jesus. If you love Jesus, it just flows out, and it gives you opportunities to share. When, uh, you have to be, he also said you have to be open to following God's lead. He said he was losing interest in basketball, and that was because he was dealing with injury and pain his senior year in college. He said uh, after that opportunity came up, he also got an opportunity to be drafted and he got drafted to the Golden State Warriors to play in the NBA. But last minute, an opportunity came up with a friend who was playing in Italy and said, hey, come join me and play. Uh, because he was dealing with losing interest in his passion and basketball, he said the NBA season was 80 games and the Italian season was 24 games. And what he decided to do was, hey, I think I'm going to do the 24 games. I don't really want to be in this 80-game season because he said he was just losing interest in basketball. He said there was a sliver of passion that was inserted into him in eighth grade. But after his senior year in college and one year in Italy, that sliver was pulled out. And uh, God just said that, come, we're going to do some very different things. And he believes that was a God moment. Uh, from there, he moved into kingdom work. And I just feel like this is just a really good example of knowing God's purpose and moving on uh, and trusting God with that process. Through this whole capstone experience, I've grown a lot. Not just in my faith, but also in my knowledge of athletics. Uh, when you say you want to be a professional athlete or whatever you want to pursue in life, it takes courage. Hearing criticism and feeling like nobody believes you can do it is hard, and that was something that I struggled with. After listening to the two pros talk, they said that it takes more inner strength and mental strength than physical strength. <coughs> and what I learned was perseverance, passion, being true to yourself, and trusting God that he's in control and that you do not have control. Speaking your passion into existence is the first step. And then running with it, no matter how crazy people think you are. Uh, Rocky said, every champion was once a contender who refused to give up. I hope this encourages you to pursue your dreams with courage and believe that you can make a difference in this world. Thank you. All right. Jonah. What sport are you most interested in? What sport am I most interested in? Good question, Jonah. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right. Uh, I probably like playing basketball the most. I think that gives me the most joy. But I also like being outside. So 
basketball kind of keeps you inside some little <laughs> den that you can't go outside. So I do like that the most. Thanks for coming, guys. This no, oh, did any of the people you interviewed talk to you about how they handle failure? Because I think when we think about sports, we always think about the one out of the mm -hmm. 2,000 uh, as a success, but most of them actually don't get there. How do you handle failure? Mm, good question. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, kind of like what Tim Tebow kind of said was like, he doesn't follow what the de what the world deems success, but just like following what he loves and what God has called him to do, and that's what he found about failure. And Goth also said that we are all human and we make mistakes. And like God has forgiven me already, then why can't I forgive either myself or other people? You know, and that's how I handle failure because we are human. <laughs> Aaron. Hey. Okay, so like, <laughs> hypothetically, like, so if you're very passionate about basketball and you uh -huh. want to pursue like that as a professional sport, but then you feel like a calling from God to do something elsewhere, and it's not really something you really want to do, but you feel like you have to, how do you struggle with that and deal with that? How do you handle, if you want to follow something in the future, but God's calling you somewhere else, but you don't know? Well, that sounds very familiar to what I'm about to do soon. Uh, so I believe that Honestly, I think God will use you wherever you go. And even though you might feel like you're not going to be able to play college basketball, like I'd offer to play basketball here in America, but I'm probably <coughs> going to go back home to Australia. And um, even though like, I honestly don't want to do that, like, I believe that God's going to use me wherever that is. And maybe it's playing for a traveling basketball team in Australia and telling people about God. There's different opportunities. I think that God's going to lead wherever he leads is going to be the most impactful. And you have to trust him. What time am I at? Uh, we got three minutes till the session ends. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you so much for coming, guys. <laughs>